the disciples of Jesus. They mm. were there to serve Jesus. Mm. And there's, there's blessings in Bas doing that. Yes, they gained themselves. It's like relationship. Sure. nowadays, I have a relationship my relationship with my daughter. I have a relationship to things of God. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Um, you were you were still telling me about the reason that you are constantly like working on the next project. Rather, is because you you don't want to keep your mind idle. You want your mind to always find the next project, mm. find the next thing to work on. Because uh, what what, do, what does the say say? An idle mind just wanders and yes. it ends up entertaining things that don't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it has always been, I started working when I was in varsity, when I was in DUT. Yeah. I used to take peace jobs. You know, I was working at the bed center, I remember, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this lifestyle has it's, it's always been like that. Yeah. Then I relocated to the UK where I had two jobs. I had to work. You relocated to the UK when? Yes, when I finished varsity. Okay, what was the reason behind that? Work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I've always been the chase. I've always been the person who loves money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how to make it. <laughs> so for me, it has always been like, I need to keep moving. I need yeah. to, I want the best for myself. And yeah. I can't be comfortable. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, when you want the best for yourself, you have to give it to yourself. Because yeah, if you're going to yeah. rely on another human being, they will fail you. Funny you say that because um, you're one of the very few women who people can actually identify that she has built her own yes right um there has been no reliance and dependency on somebody else but contrary to that so many other women especially the younger ladies oh mm. suspect because i'm 21 22 mm. 24 25 they're fixated on this mentality that money should be because they are dependent mm. signally culture of indo they rich finally go on there yeah Whew. it's a problem it's a tough one because if that man is done with you you that's it. It's yeah. over. You know, you need to make sure that, that you introduce yourself to a lifestyle that you can keep up sure, with. Sure, sure, you know? sure, sure. You don't have to actually love someone that you don't want to be with just because they can provide for you. Yeah. For, so for me, it has always been, let them find me moving. Mm, Whoever mm, comes mm, into mm, my mm, life mm, is coming to add, yeah. not for me to actually depend on them. Yeah. Whether they're there or not, I still am able to keep myself. I'm well kept by myself. Why the eventing space, Londi? Because it's such a space that was taken, what can I say? I'd, I'd say 10, 15 years ago, yeah. it was a space that was undermined. 
Exactly. People saw it as e catering. Yeah. For the lack of a better <laughs> and word. And there's still people who, really? who, who refer to me as a catering person. But this is a new career. But you know, with events, it's a lifetime thing. Okay. You, you know, you are set forever. Once you are able to build a good brand, yeah. you will you you'll always have clients. And social There'll media an has event. made it very simple for us. Yeah. Because you work, yeah. you post your work, you get a client. Yeah, yeah. So for me it has always been that, you know, um eventing is a new career, but it has done so well sure people sure. are now taking it serious because if you have a function you don't want to be running up and down getting different things from different people yeah you rather just employ one event planner you deal with that person when yeah. it comes to sound food deco everything so for me my business is not about just deco mm -hmm. we are a complete event management company what does that mean it means er we are able to source out everything okay. from artist to food to flowers to table to chairs with my business, I never charge my clients coordination fee because they've already given the business to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, when you work with government, because it's big events, then when you start to charge a coordination fee. But you need to just... It's all about making the client feel safe. Sure. And then they don't have to run around. It's just them sitting down and everything is done. Yeah, so when yeah. I come in, I take over everything. Isn't it an administrative nightmare, though, being the event organizer at the caliber that you are? Because... There is events organizing, and there is, and then there is Andimashi building events, yes. which is super luxury most yeah. of the time with most of the events that you do. And people who are willing to pay that much to get that, aren't they so demanding? They are. You know, uh, people put value to money. Yeah. So the more they pay, the more demanding they are. Yeah. But that's, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. I enjoy taking on a challenge because then it makes me realize that I still have to work hard. I see myself as a, an international wedding planner yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to stop until that happens yeah. in my life. So it's all about you know, trying to do the best. Yeah, yeah. Every event that you do, it's not just a basic event. You need to make sure that, because your, your client is in the event. Mm -hmm. So your next client has always been there watching what you do. So everything you've got to do with integrity, everything you've got to do, thinking that, well, my client is here. I've got to get another business from this event. How much rejection have you dealt with in building this business? I've dealt with rejection uh, in my own space, mm -hmm. in my private life, which is rejection is pain. Yeah. It's very painful. I come from a family of love. You know, I don't know rejection. But as I grew up, I realized would say, I'm going to be rejected. In my business, I get rejected. A staff member just resigns, just like that, without closure sends you a WhatsApp message, I'm leaving. <laughs> you know, I always say to my staff, everyone else lives this business besides me because I'm the owner and I'm the visionary. Sure. So whether, no matter how difficult the client is, I've got to endure and I've got to deal with it head on. Because if I give up, so many people will suffer, yeah, including yeah, my yeah, own kids, yeah, you yeah. know. So rejection has been a very painful part of my life. I've been rejected. And firstly, you know, it takes you by shock when someone rejects you. The next thing is you've got to accept. Mm -hmm. You've got to sit down and accept, okay, this is rejection. How the, do I then grow from this? Because yeah, it yeah. also teaches you to grow. Yeah, yeah. We get rejection everywhere by our friends, by our family members, by our staff members, yeah. by our suppliers. Some yeah. suppliers will just give up on you and just yeah. say, I don't want to work with you anymore. Yeah. But rejection will teach you so many things about yourself. You know that you need to learn at some point you need to sit down and say what have i learned from this person rejecting me i log on to your instagram though and i don't see a rejected person how do you keep it together because you don't look rejected you look like a person who always has it together you believe in god um you dress up well you've built a, a, a luxurious life for yourself i'm giving more lot of rejection alone <laughs> than that yeah. i draw a lot of strength from prayer hey? yeah. so this is how my day works Every morning, from Monday to Saturday, I log into a prayer called the Business Prayer Network. That's the first thing I do before I get into social media, before I start my day. I always start it with the Word of God. Because at the end of the day, you've got to be strong for everyone. People that are inspired by you, they can't see you break, you know. Secondly, my, I've got kids. I've got teenage kids at home. They can't see me break. So we're not going to sit and, and talk about how I handle rejection, but rather how do I then navigate around rejection? Because we get rejected, mm. I can't deny that. For me, it has always been, I'm a strong woman, but I do break, you know, I'm very strong outside, but when 
you, you touch my inner parts, you realize how um, soft I am. But also, when you run a business like my business, you got to be heads on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't just break because clients will tell you where to get off. Yeah, yeah. But that's the challenging part. That's why I always say events are not for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Because you actually have to forget about yourself. Uh -huh. You have to die into who you are. It's not about your status. It's not about what car you drive, but it's about service delivery. Sure, sure. Now you need to be able to distinguish and differentiate between providing a service and who you are. You know, I've also drawn a lot of strength from my church mm -hmm. because they've taught us on how to serve. Yeah, yeah. Because my job requires me to serve my clients. If yeah. I'm doing a wedding, it will mean for the rest of that day, I'm serving the bride and the groom. Sure, sure, now, sure. What does it take for me to serve? It calls for me to forget who I am and focus on the job. On, on, on the people, especially, that you're serving. Yes. So people look at it as just eventing, but it's actually an act of service. It is. Yeah. Uh, deep down. Yeah. You know, uh, Jesus Christ tells us, Uguti, if we can't serve people, yeah. his people, if yeah. we can't love his people, then yeah. you won't be able to make money. I always say, with ego and business, it doesn't go together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to actually put aside who you are, what you are known for, where you come from, just focus on the fact that you are here and you are meant to serve your client. A bit personal, has love been kind to you? Yes, love has been kind to me, but also love has been unkind to me. Yeah, yeah, like all of us. Yes, yes, yes. I've gone through a divorce, mm -hmm. and you know it was a horrible time of my life. Mm -hmm. But I, I actually attended a lot of therapy. Mm -hmm. People are scared to go for therapy, but therapy does really help. Does divorce empower a woman? Because a lot of women are shunned upon after they are divorced. Yeah, but the people who've either never been married before and don't know why people divorce yeah. will have all these comments yes. why you divorce and how much free you actually can feel after a divorce mm. so the thing is um we are taught that a woman should get married yeah. when we grow up at home your mom will tell you you're a princess you're going to make, marry a king hmm. but they never teach us Uguti, when the king doesn't love you anymore what do you do hmm. you know when the king stops being a king you know um I always say, if love is not served, I will leave the table. Mm, 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 that mm. has been my story. That continues to be my story. I'm not going to do that, which is why <laughs> I work really hard so that I can afford my lifestyle. Yeah. I'm not dependent on anyone. I would love to receive love because love is reciprocated, if yes, I put it yes, that way. Yes, yes. If I no longer receive love, what's the point of being in that relationship? Yeah, yeah. So for me, it has always been that, you know, um, I love love. I do well when I'm loved, mm -hmm. you know. Even my business b blossoms when I have someone loving me. Mm, mm, mm. But I also said to myself, I can't rely on love from people. The to love for you to blossom. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I know my source is Jesus Christ. And so therapy probably the taught love. you that. Yes. Therapy, the therapy, therapy process. Therapy, I attended, I think, four sessions after my divorce. The woman, can I mention her name? Yeah. Her name is Portia. Yeah. She's a therapist here in Mlanga, uh, near the hospital. Yeah. I went there, I was depressed, yeah. Lungelo, you know, and I'm confident to speak about it yeah. because it's a phase. Yeah. We all go through stuff. Um, when I sat down with her, I told her everything that has transpired in my life. She asked me one question. Do you understand how much this man has empowered you by just leaving you? Hmm. That's the word that made me get out of the seat and I left. I've never been for therapy ever since because she re made me realize my power. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. guess for most women, we feed off relationships mm -hmm. and someone mm -hmm. loving you. Oof. But when you see a woman blossoms after divorce, it's because she has realized who she is. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes in the marriage, you die to self. You serve your, your husband. Oof. You serve your kids. Because marriage is an act of service. It's an again. act of service. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah. know, you cook for your husband. You worry about the kids. You worry about the business. But you never have time for yourself. Hmm. Now, when this person has woken up and said, I don't want you anymore or left you, that's when you need to start feeding love to yourself. Because at the end of the day, you matter. So when I'm loved, I'm able to do anything and everything because I feed from love. 
but also I'm not dependent on love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke to, um, I had a guest on the show. Her name is um, Sims Wright. She's a, a YouTube entertainer. Mm. And she recently went through a divorce. Um, her divorce was involved a bit of abuse, so your situations may not be different. But what I gathered from her is that even though there was an element of, as you're saying, her husband leaving, is that it was also important in therapy for her to realize her own mistakes exactly. in the marriage. Yes. Did you take a chance to realize your wrongs? I did. And did you confront your wrongs? I did. We attended therapy together. Mm -hmm. We were able to apologize to each other. After the divorce? Yes, for what has happened. Wow. And also, to see him loving someone else, for me, it was like, let me... Love also allows you to see the person go for what they want. And let go. Yes. Yeah. Love is not all about you receiving it. True, but true. But also to see someone loving someone, you understand? Yeah. It's the painful thing because we always think till death do us apart. Sure. But what happens if death doesn't do your part? Mm -hmm. Someone comes in and your husband starts to love someone else. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, it was a matter of as long as he's happy, I'm happy for him. And that was her kept me going because I had my son to look after. Yeah, yeah. So you actually have to pick yourself up. Mm. Divorce is not the end of the road. It might just be the beginning of <laughs> the <road. laughs> It might be the beginning of the blossoming. You know, yeah. yeah you are able to, you know, work on your business. You are able to look after Because you have your time, all, you have all, time all over now. again. Yeah. I actually appreciate my time. Yeah. When I come from work, I sit on my bed and I'm like, yo, I'm so happy because I'm not worried about who's doing what behind my back, who's Asking who's liking whose picture, <laughs> you know, all those things that because we worry we about. A, because we have a new problem nowadays yeah. that marriages back then and relationships back then didn't have. There was no where social, there's social media. media. Now, you're sitting there, you're like, you oh, see your husband liking a picture hey, of a bikini and you wonder, are they talking indirectly, directly? And, and, and there's something I always say yeah, is that... it's normal. No, actually... Why is your partner liking a lot of pictures or following people that don't look like you? Shorty type hacker is not you. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah there's but definitely. Divorce is not the end of, well, to sum it up, your question. Yeah. Divorce is not actually the end. And the fact, I'm not encouraging it. Mm. If you are in a situation where you should stay, stay. Mm. But also do not stay where you are not needed. That's Does the beauty of being self aware and self aware. Yes, because you've got your own money. Sure. Um, you're not reliant. You don't. You know, even if this person is in my life, yeah. it's because they want me in their life, not because they have to. So for me, it has always been that. If I love someone, let's be happy. If we're no longer happy, what's the point? Are you in a place right now where your heart is open to loving again and loving to the extent of full commitment? Yes, yes, I love love. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I do well when I'm loved. Um, I'm ready to date, yeah. yeah, but also uh, I'm not ready to commit. I need to work on a few areas of my life. Sure, sure, know. sure. Uh, also, I'm still attending therapy. Why? Okay, I know you're not a, I know you're not a cast member, but as a person who's been very private about her life and has been intentional about protecting what matters and just focusing on the work. Mm. Why are you opening yourself up to reality TV? Because reality TV has very nasty elements to it. Why, why take that decision? Why say yes when you receive the call? Okay, so I was approached from season one until season four. Are you serious? Yes. But season one, season two, season three, I was very sure. Season three, I was healing. Season one, I was still married. Okay. Uh, I wanted to protect my marriage. Sure. Season two, same thing. Season three, I was going through a process of divorce. It was a no-no. Mm -hmm. This season, I think I'm more open to anything that I want to do yeah, yeah, when it comes yeah. to my brand. Yeah. You will not see my personal life, obviously, but I took this because I wanted to attend the different events. Okay. And Nungu was the one who was inviting me, come sure. friend, let's go to this event. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. you know. But also, eventually, I want to have my own reality show, oh, but okay. it must be about profiling different CEOs. Sure. You know, I do well in a space where we talk about money. And business. And business. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my strength. I don't know how to throw people under the bus. <laughs> I don't know how to bring drama. <laughs> drama is, does not tie in with my brand. And with who you are, your character, not just your brand. As well, I'm a who very you are. positive person. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very careful about what I say to an individual because I know what words break people. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very, very careful. I always say my tongue must not hurt anyone. Do you feel like 
on, on the show, the people have been trying to provoke you, thinking they'll get a reaction out of you. No, the show was received very well. It just happened with one lady. Mm -hmm. And I just, she, just, she didn't get the best out of me mm -hmm. because I refused. Yeah, yeah. You know, in Sizulu City, Ungabe Nawe. So, Ungabe Nawe when the situation presents itself because yeah. I've got more to lose. I've yeah. built a brand, yeah. you know. I'm not going to fight with people for no reason. I'm not going to be a pig. Yeah, yeah. I don't play in the mud. Yeah. Outside of the I'm busy collecting awards. Mm -hmm. Not in the <laughs> mud. <laughs> um, but but Una sis Londi, it's it's we can't ignore that you've got a lot of very popular friends who yes. are influential. It so it was bound to happen. happen yes. Uguti, um people are going to have opinions about your friendships mm. and people you hang around with. So and also, let's also remember, these people are not just my friends. They, they, they are actually my clients. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, so most of them are my clients. Yeah. And I'm not going to now sit here and be sorry and answer to things that I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to be, what is she talking about? <laughs> I don't know how to do drama. I, I also told production, yeah. I'm, I wasn't here for drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have built a very good brand sure. over 16 years. It has taken me a lot of time to build my brand. Blood, I sweat, and tears. I will not mess it up. And prayer, and love, and, and la passion. You know, hours, my hours, kids, hours. My yeah. kids, this business, I'm building a legacy for my children. Sure. So it will not take a certain woman to, to tear it up because I know the work that I've put in. Speaking of your kids, you seem to have a very beautiful relationship with your kids. Yeah, I, mean, I love the, the little them. Snippets, They're my source of strength. The little snippets that we see online, yeah. it seems like, yo, lo mamu ya standi nganzake. I live for my kids. Ne? Mm. But with how hard you work, you're always traveling. Do you ever suffer from mom guilt? As if there's areas that you're missing out Okay, on? so um, my kids are mostly in boarding school. Okay. Yeah, there's, they've been there forever for safety reasons. Um, I don't suffer from mom um, guilt because at the end of the day I make time for my kids. Okay. I make sure that I'm there. I'm always present. But when it's time for me to travel, it's important for me to, you know, get Broad away from home. Broaden your horizons, yeah. Yes, get away from home, go on a vacation. I came back, I come back feeling better. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's, I feed from traveling. I love traveling. It's I've interesting. always travel. It's world. interesting that um, a lot of people who are, are highly successful as yourself can attest that there's time for everything. Yes. And there's, but there's another brand of people who say, no, I live for my husband. I live for my kids. I want to be with them every day, see them every day. You know what? Life is about finding balance. Okay. It's very important to balance time for your family. Yeah. Time for your business. Time for your children. Time for your friends. You need friends. Social life. Yeah, you actually yeah, do yeah. need a social life. So never rob yourself from... You just need to find a good balance within, you know, the people in your life. But everybody needs time, you know. I make time for my mom. Yeah. I make time for my sisters, you yeah. know. So it's very important for one, a person like me, to find balance because that's the most important thing. You I speak feel. so fondly, Sis Londi, at the um, initiation of our conversation. You speak so fondly of God. You mentioned Jesus Christ. You mentioned your church. Um, why is it so important for... A successful woman to have God at the center of their life. See, when you run a successful business or a business to be general, um, you face so many challenges and so many. I always say it's not even about enemies. People will just say nasty things. Now, I draw a lot of strength from prayer and attending my church. I would not be the laundry that you guys know if I was not rooted in my church because that's where I draw a lot of strength. That's where. I tithe, you know, for my business to be where it is. I'm a very, uh, I was raised in church. So for me as an adult, church is all I know. Mm, mm, Without mm. church, I'm not able to operate because I need the word of God for yeah. me to push forward. Yeah. I need my pastor to pray for me, for me to actually become the laundry that you guys see. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot of work that my church w helps me with within myself, you know, just to be a better person. Church is not trendy as much anymore, though. Why do you think you are so rooted? I know you explained to me as Oguti, it, it, it helps you to be who you are, the tithing, the pastor's prayers. Um, 
But a lot of people say, no, just be spiritual. Loving God can be done in your own home, yes. watching videos. People love saying that yeah. nowadays. You Why is it important on. to have community? I, mean, I still drive every Sunday, put my kids in the car, we drive to church. Yeah. Because I always say to myself, the connection that you, you can't live in an island as yeah. a human being. Yeah. You need to find balance, as I've been saying. Church plays a big part of my life. Yeah. Had I not been serving in church, yeah. I would not be able to serve my clients. Sure. It's such a difficult service. time. Service. 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 I'm in the service industry. I'm in a space where I need to serve people. Now, my church has taught me the importance of serving people. Yeah. You know, there's a time when I serve my pastors, you know, uh, carry their Bibles. You know, that is service. I forget about the fact that I'm a director or yeah. a CEO of a company. Yeah, yeah. Now, the disciples of Jesus, they mm. were there to serve Jesus. Mm. And there's, there's blessings in Bas doing Nigella. that. Yes, they gave themselves. It's like we relationship. Sure. Nowadays, we have relationship with relationship my daughter. As soon as we have things to things of God. Things that matter. Things that matter. God is the source. I yeah. always say to people who phone me and cry and have issues, I always say, have you told God about your situation? Because mm. you are telling me. I'm going to go and tell my friend. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to think I'm gossiping about yeah, you because yeah. it's a human nature. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But firstly, before we tell people about our challenges, ask yourself, have I told God mm. about this issue? Because he can help you solve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So with me, it has always been that you could see God is my source. Yeah. That's where I run to. Yeah, whether yeah. my life is looking good or whether I'm in the middle of a, a dilemma or I'm crashing. God is my source. I feel seen. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> you, you live in my heart as yes. well. <laughs> yeah. A bit about where Londi comes from, because as you're saying, it's taken, what, 16 years to build the business. Yes. 16 years before that, who was Londi? Was she doing a normal job like many people? Okay, let me take you through my CV. Yeah. Okay, so I started at DUT, then I went to the UK. Okay. Stayed there for four years. I was working as a, a, a receptionist and a carer. Mm -hmm. I was working in a nursing home. For me, I wanted to save money to come back here and okay. open a business. Sure. I come from a very uh, humble beginning. Sure. But we don't, my family, we don't have much, mm -hmm. you know. So I went to the UK, built a house for my mom, paid off my nephew's uh, school fees that I was, uh, had taken a loan. Yeah. Came back um, here and I opened Andy Matley. With the little income that I had, I was able to build from one fork, spoon, chair. Yeah, yeah. Also, I catering to then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it has always been for me, I've got to make sure that I, I, I take myself out of poverty. Hmm. And also, if I'm not using the, the space that I'm in, no one will, hmm. you know. Um, I think my mom also played a big role because she's always told me, Guti, yeah, yeah. Not these, you know, I always say to my daughter, hey, <laughs> yeah. that's that's the lifestyle yeah. that I live. But also that has helped me because I am who I am because of my mom. Yeah. I am who I am because of my family. I am who I am because of the friends that I keep. I keep very successful people around me. I don't know if you saw Ayanda, who was with Sorish. That's yes, my friend. Yes, you know? yes. You have to actually, you know, surround yourself with winners yes. so that you become one of the winners. Sure, sure, you know? sure. I don't have time to sit in restaurants and eat food and gossip about people. <laughs> my time is all about money. I yes. always say that's the language I understand better, money. Do you not, are you not scared, though, that that makes you be perceived as materialistic and that outside of money there's no laundry, there's no character? Not really. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed because everything requires money. Mm -hmm. Fair. I love money language because at the end of the day, whether you take me for materials, but I'm providing it. It's not mm. like I'm asking people. I don't bother anyone. Oh, shook monty, you're not stealing I, from anyone. I just work. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So I'm not going to be ashamed of the fact that I love money. I mm -hmm. love money. Money makes life easy. Yeah, you know, true. money gives, <laughs> brings See, happiness. Yeah. 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 You know, with money, money gives you freedom to do whatever you want. Whether you want to travel today, whether you want to go shopping, whether you want to buy equipment for your business, money makes things easy. Yeah, yeah. So we can't shy away from having money topics. As long as you are able to provide for yourself, I think it's better than having to ask people around for money. Um, on, on the topic of 
uh, your childhood, going to the UK and everything, um, not your childhood rather, how you started working. Um, why is it important for somebody to take such transitions, such risks, such as leaving the country um, and then coming back to starting a business? Because so many of us have never set foot outside of KZN, for example. Yeah, yeah. What's important about taking such risks, such as leaving the country, for example? Yeah. For me, when I went to the UK, it, w it was all about the culture. I okay. wanted to learn a different culture. Yeah. When I got there, I learned everything that I needed to know regarding business that place everyone is moving mm, you could be mm, sitting mm, next mm, to a billionaire but we are all equal you know it's never about the status what i liked about uh, the uk but also it was about the fact that i can work two jobs and earn a good you know income mm -hmm. so for myself it was like when i go home i'm not going to work for anyone i'm not going to be employed because yes. this that i've learned here in the uk has inspired me so when i came back i was like I'm opening my own business. And everyone was like, hi, bo, at home. My mom was like, business. We are very happy business, uh, yeah, way, yeah. you know. And it actually turned out when I, I actually influenced everyone in my, in my home. Mm, mm. My brother resigned from work. My sister resigned from work. They all in having their own now. businesses. <laughs> yeah. Because really, even my son, I always tell him, you're not going to work for anyone. Try having your own business. Because yeah. this is what we must encourage. Yeah. You know, um, I understand business is not for everyone. Sure, sure. But business gives you freedom, hey? You are able, you're not earning a salary of 20,000 for 12 months. Hmm. This month you can make 500,000. Next month you can make 300. The following month you can make a million. You know, you can go as far as you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Just so according to how much. Your check is not limited. According to how much you push yourself. My and pastor how much you're always says, it's like giving God a blank check. Yeah. You write the amount you want to earn in business. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it does have challenges. I won't lie. I'm still going through different challenges. But I'm so grateful I opened my own business. I'm so grateful that I have something that I will leave my kids with. I always say I'm building a legacy. It's so hard to build something from scratch. It's the most challenging thing. But I'm not regretting it. There's something we don't speak about often, especially as a person, M. Denini, who becomes much more successful than others you. is that there's a lot of people who then try to access you for the wrong reasons yes, yes. for your money mm. for even some just want to destroy you because they are like why not me why are they why is she why yes. is londi so successful yeah. um how do you deal with that how do you filter Oguti, even in family Oguti, Abolo, this is a hater see with us in my family my granddad he never went to school he couldn't even write but he was a prominent businessman. Okay. He was wealthy in farming. He was wealthy in having shops, selling food to the community of where I come from. You see, you need a little bit of education, but you need street smarts. That's why you'd see a very educated person who, who's just working, mm -hmm. but they don't have the street smarts. Business requires you to have both. Sure. A little bit of education, a little bit of academics here and there, and then... The rest is street. Yeah. When you're meeting a client, how are you going to approach this person so that they can pay you a million rand? Within the first one minute, the story finally seems be so compelling. A strategy. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need in business. It, it's a strategy. Yeah. And also, now social media has made business so much easier. Our audience are there. Yeah. I always say, to your followers are money. Don't just think it's followers. Eh? Hey. Convert those people uh, and sell something to them. You will see money getting. Don't show account. off things that are not yours for you no see, reason. I always say on social media, you have the power to show people what you want them to see. Sh true. When I wake up, I want to show them about my business so that they can buy into my vision. True. Oof. I'm not going to be flaunting my cars and my home. That's not the part I want people to see. Yeah. I want people to see a prominent businesswoman who's well kept, yeah, yeah, who knows yeah, how to yeah, behave. Yeah. Even when I go out drinking and stuff, I'm very, very careful because I'm building a brand. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'm you can't careful just do anyhow. about the fact that I get into relationships. Even when I'm going to get into a relationship, I research about that person because yeah. I don't want drama around yeah, my life. Yeah, I don't want, yeah. I've worked really hard for me to just do things haphazardly. Um, <laughs> One day you are 60, you are retired, and you are looking back at this interview. Um, you, your, your children, what do you want them to remember 
loaned in Rwanda for? Okay, so firstly, my, I'm such a big inspiration to my kids. Yeah. You know, uh, I always tell them, Muti, you guys are lucky because you get to experience me here at home. La, I'm again. not a boss when I'm here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a mom. mother. Yeah. So when I, when my kids watch this interview, I want them to know how much I love them. Firstly, and I want them to know what everything that I do, and everything around me rotates around them. Yeah. I want them to know that the business that I've built is me showing the love that I have for them. Yeah. Yeah. With all the challenges, I always sit down with my son and my daughter. I always tell them, this is what I'm facing right now. And I'm trusting God and we pray together. I want them to continue building this business. I don't know whether you've seen Uzintle taking over her, you know. I always speak about this business because it's visible. Yeah, yeah, makes, yeah. We see her, she's taken over the business. She's became the CEO. The father and is more away from the business. And it's not a case of Ugutu inheriting Ubabusa Pila. Yes. 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 Um, what's the one thing you know for sure, right? What's the one thing you know for sure? And what's the Bible verse that has guided your life so far and you think will always be there to protect you? Um, what has guided me so far is how I carry myself. You know, um, I always said I want people to see me as a prominent businesswoman. I want people to receive me as a prominent businesswoman. But also I want people to treat me serious because mm -hmm. my life is not a joke. Yeah. You know, every time I see anything negative, I try to move away from it mm -hmm. because that's not the story I want to write. Sure. I want to write positive stories. Sure. I want people to know me for who I am and for what I do. Yeah. Life has presented so many opportunities to me, uh, good and bad, but I'm forever grateful to the almighty for yeah. keeping me, yeah. you know, uh, through the challenges of life. Um, the other question that you asked was favorite Bible, Bible, favorite Bible, Bible verse. verse. It's um, Jeremiah, where it says, Wuti, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and make you, you know, give you hope, give, give you, you hope, strength. give you strength. Yeah. You know, um, that's the verse I draw most inspiration from. And also, there's one that talks about, in, you know, enlarging your tent. For me, tent is what I use when I work. And that scripture actually shows me, Wuti, no matter how much I dream, God is there for me. Hmm. No matter, it's infinity, you know. God can just do things immediately. And I believe in him through everything, through every challenge that I face. I'm always like, Lord, you the guidance. In such a way that even when I leave my house, going to work out, I'm always reliant on the Holy Spirit. to Which route must I take? Must I go through the freeway or the M4? And the small voice that tells me is the one that I follow. So... Jesus Christ is the leader of my life and he's the source. Without him, my life is nothing. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Isi Zulu, Siti, Hamba, Ngamandla, Ona, loosely translated the strength within you, the strength mm. that God has deposited into your life, the God that is in your heart, use that strength to start to build and to grow your vision. And that's exactly what I got from this conversation with Londi Mazwite today. Londi, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed, Ooh. and I can't wait to see more greatness from you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you to your team. Thank you for the warm welcome. Yeah. This interview was just relaxed for me. You know, it wasn't, I was expecting much tough ah, questions. Thank you so much, <laughs> Lungelo, and I wish you all the best, and thank you for opening such a platform where thank we you. come and we talk about our brands. Yeah. It's such a beautiful space, sure. and may God give you all the desires of your heart. Thank you so much. Cheers. I'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs> Introducing the epitome of luxury living. 
Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.